Mr. Lurie, the city has violent crime rates lower than that of many of its peers, but property crime in San Francisco remains stubbornly high. What is your plan to specifically deter and lower property crime in San Francisco? I appreciate the question, but I want to start and acknowledge that today is September 11th. Um, uh, I want to acknowledge the heroic efforts of our public safety and our first responders and our firefighters that day and every day since. I think it's really important that we take a moment to acknowledge 9-11 uh, today. Um, public safety is my number one priority. Has been from the day I launched my campaign. We have a mayor um, and a group of City Hall insiders uh, that have put their finger in the wind and said, one day I'm for public safety, the other day I am not. As mayor, I will be for public safety every single day. We have Dreamforce coming. We know that downtown will be safe next week. Uh, during APEC, we had safety. The taxpayers and the residents and our small businesses deserve better. I'm going to fully staff our police department, our sheriff's department, and our 911 dispatch. Uh, I have a friend in the small business community. He called me on Monday. He said he knows of 30 small businesses that have been broken into in the last four weeks. Many are no longer calling it in because they don't, the response times are too slow. 911 call times for highest priority incidents take up to 10 minutes for police to respond because we are down 500 police officers. We should be around 2,000 police officers. We're down below 1,500. Recruiting more police officers and sheriffs and 911 dispatch office will be my top priority. Supervisor Safai, I know you also have a plan to tackle property crime, uh, including more community policing, neighborhood foot patrols, hiring more cops, fixing 911. It's a long list. Um, with the city facing a massive long-term budget deficit, how are you going to pay for all that? Doug, you just took my whole answer. So how, how am I going to answer now? <laughs> just kidding. Um, but listen, before I answer, I want to just say a little bit more about myself and how I got to where I am. I'm a proud immigrant, as you referenced. I came to this country uh, leaving violence and upheaval. Uh, came to this country when I was about six years old, and I was raised, uh, ended up being raised by a single mom who's sitting in the front row right there. I'm a proud husband and father of two, um, and I've dedicated 24 years to public service in the city, working for two mayors, Mayor Willie Brown, the mayor that knew how, and Mayor Gavin Newsom. And those two taught me what it means to be mayor in this city, and also working with organized labor for almost a decade. Um, you talk about the different plans that we have and how we're going to face that with deficits. All of the work that I did leading up to that point and to this point has emphasized and informed my work. So I have a ballot proposition, Proposition N. We have a shortfall in not just officers. If you call 911 right now, God forbid, we're down 40 911 call officers. We're down nurses. If you get hit over the head, you might have to wait in general for some time. We're down police officers over almost 500. We should be at 2,100 right now. And all of that happened under the leadership and direction of Mayor London Bree. She's only put money into recruitment, $2,500 uh, $2, um, quarter million dollars over the last six years. My proposition would say, you come work for our city. For th after three years, we'll give you up to $25,000 in student loan forgiveness. This is the first year in California history that you have to have a four-year degree to be a police officer, and I would pay for that by using all of the additional overtime that we have to pay because we're understaffed in all of those categories. Workers are being assaulted. Small businesses are being broken into 12 in the last two weeks in my district. It's not theory for me, like Daniel Lurie. This is something that I'm on the ground doing every day. Supervisor Peskin, this evening we expect to hear most of the candidates, if not all, say, we need more officers, we need to fully staff the SFPD. As the most progressive candidate on the stage, do you believe more police is the answer to help solve San Francisco's crime and safety issue? Thanks for the question, Ryan. There are a lot of candidates on this stage who talk tough, but in my experience, maybe in your experience, the tough talkers often don't get the job done. We need tough management and we need a balanced approach to make San Francisco safer. That is what I have done as a member of the Board of Supervisors and exactly what I'll do as mayor. 
First, I've worked with the captains and officers at Central Station for 25 years. They know my work, and that is why so many of them are supporting me in my campaign for mayor. Second, police staffing is absolutely critical. And as president of the Board of Supervisors, uh, I have presided over an increase of 100, over $100 million uh, since I became president in 2023. I co-authored Proposition F on this November's ballot, uh, which will retain 50 veteran officers. And I support, together with Supervisor Safai, using forgivable college loans to bring in new recruits from our communities to make our department stronger. Third, this is not just about police staffing. I can tell you as someone who was president of the board in 2008, when our homicide rate almost hit 100, I led the way in providing funding for gang prevention, for at-risk youth jobs, and the next year, our homicide rate fell by more than half. And Mark Farrell likes to talk tough, uh, but in the brief five-month period he was interim mayor, our violent crime rate was 30%, 30% higher than for the same period this year. And our property crime rate was 70% higher. And these are not my facts, by the way. These come from the San Francisco Police Department. So like I said, there are people up here who talk tough, but what we need is tough management, experience management, and a balanced approach to make this city safer. Uh, former interim Mayor Farrell, I'll first give you 30 seconds mm -hmm. to rebut to what Supervisor Peskin just said about your record. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everyone. I find it hilarious that Supervisor Peskin is here lecturing me about public safety when he is the one on the Board of Supervisors who also presided over the Board of Supervisors over the last few years when we've seen a record decrease in police staffing did not object when Mayor Breed defunded the police department three years ago. We need a mayor who's gonna lead on public safety. Not talk tough during an election year, but actually lead on this issue, not because it's political, but because they believe it to the core. Public safety has always been my number one issue in City Hall, it always will be, and as mayor next year, I will make that my number one priority. Well, and that actually leads into my next question for you, which is that you blamed Mayor Breed for the city's police officer shortage, but most major police departments across California saw a sharp drop off in police staffing after 2020. What would you have done differently, and what's your plan to increase police staffing in the immediate future? My approach to public safety is holistically different than Mayor Breed. She has been absent on this issue for the past six years, just like she's absent tonight on this debate stage. We need a mayor who's gonna prioritize this every single day in office. When I was a member of the Board of Supervisors and chaired the budget committee for the longest period of time in city's history, I partnered with Mayor Lee and we grew our police department to record staffing levels. And when I became mayor, I did the same thing and grew it even further. The reality is since I left office in 2018, I've been gone from City Hall for six years. Police staffing is down 600 officers. Our police department, essentially 25% of it, has been eviscerated. We need to do different, we need to do better, we need to turn the page and write a different chapter for the city of San Francisco. I will be the leader to do that on public safety in particular. I also want to acknowledge that we are standing here on the anniversary of September 11th and thank all of our first responders not only here in the city, but around the country for their service and putting their lives on the line for us every single day. And I am proud to have the endorsement of the majority of our first responder departments here in San Francisco and their unions. Proud to be endorsed by our firefighters. Proud to be endorsed by our sheriffs. What we need to do in public safety in particular, number one, I do believe we need a new police chief. Second of all, we need to fully fund our police department, refund our police department, take back give back the money that Mayor Breed took away, and then we need to fully staff our police department through the DROP program. We need to do it through lateral hiring and ultimately through our police academy so we can train our own officers to make sure that they are under our supervision and we are homegrown in terms of developing the police that we want on the streets of San Francisco. Public safety and support for our police officers will be paramount in my administration. Uh, if I could follow up quickly, 
uh, you mentioned that you want a change in leadership in the police department. Can you articulate why, in your view, our current police chief has failed at his job and what you would look for from the next police chief that's different? Look, Chief Scott is a good man. I said that every single time. However, the average tenure of a police chief in the U.S. is three years. He's been here for eight. And along with Mayor Breed, presided over a police department that has been defunded, that has lost over 25% of its workforce, that is having difficulty recruiting and allowing the police commission to essentially run roughshod over our police officers, demoralizing the rank and file that protect us every single day <clears throat> on our streets. What I want in a new police chief is someone who's gonna fight with me, fight for more budget dollars. And if I renege on my promises, call me out. I want a fighter, someone who's gonna actively recruit and inspire the rank and file in our police department once again. We need a leader in the mayor's office. We need a leader in our police department for the next chapter of San Francisco. That is what I will bring to City Hall. 